The Earth, Terra, Gaia, the third rock from the sun. This planet has been our home for all of human history and beyond. Yet, there's still much we don't understand about our insignificant pale blue dot. Where did life begin? When will disaster strike? And who thought of the name? Here are seven things we don't know about Earth. In at number seven, how it works. Plate tectonics is the accepted theory that Earth's crust and upper mantle is made of large fragments which glide over the rest of the mantle, collectively forming a shell to protect us from a fiery death 2,800 kilometers beneath our feet. But as for what's below that, we're still working that out. Seismic studies show our outer core is liquid and our inner core is solid, and that they're probably about 80% iron. But we don't know the chemical composition of the rocks in our mantle. We don't know what processes cause plate tectonics, and we don't know for certain why Earth has a magnetic field. We have some good ideas, but these are all based on satellite scans and mathematical models. And we can't really dig down there to look, since the deepest hole ever dug by humans is Russia's Kola Super Deep Borehole at 12.3 kilometers. Interestingly, a lot of what we do know about Earth's seismological activity can be attributed to the development of nuclear weapons. During the Cold War, seismological research was heavily funded to help detect nuclear detonations, which means all those no new kippies were holding humanity back, and Kim Jong-il was just a keen geologist all along. In at six, sedimentary, my dear Watson. By analyzing sedimentary and volcanic rocks, we can track changes in the Earth's magnetic field throughout our planet's history. And in doing so, we've noticed some rather strange anomalies, one of which is occurring right now. On several occasions, the Earth's magnetic field has reversed, only to then revert back and stay that way for as long as 10 million years. Data released in May by the European Space Agency also showed Earth's magnetic poles are weakening at a much faster rate than previously thought and that we could be heading for another magnetic reversal in our near future. The last time this happened was in the Stone Age, and we don't know whether it's caused by events in our core or tectonic plate movements. But don't worry, because if it happens, the worst thing magnetic reversal will cause is the obsolescence of everyone's compasses, which is great news if you own a compass factory. In at five, where and how did life begin? The theory that anatomically modern humans originated in Africa 250,000 years ago before dispersing to the rest of the world is well known and widely accepted. But what about before that? Where did Earth's earliest forms of life first begin to flourish? The primordial soup theory states that chemicals slopped together in the Earth's oceans may have provided the building blocks necessary for life to get its ass in gear. The energy to kick things off could have then come from lightning as the Miller-Urey experiment from 1953 showed that electric sparks can generate amino acids and sugars from an atmosphere similar to that of early Earth. Alternatively, life may have begun deep within clay or ocean ice, at the bottom of the sea around hydrothermal vents, or via panspermia, where life forms from a habitable planet are transported via meteorites and asteroids. So nobody has yet pinpointed how and where life began, but since it's likely we started underground, in the ocean, or on another planet, I guess you could say we're all fish, moles, or Martians. Number 4. When Will Disaster Strike? The prediction of earthquake activity and volcanic eruption has improved significantly over the past century. But there are still many things we don't know about these devastating natural disasters which would really help us prepare for them in the future. And that would mean we could quit making cheap-ass disaster movies where Morgan Freeman always seems to be president. Perhaps if we understand the behaviors going on in the Earth's core and mantle, we may be better equipped to figure out how faults form to cause earthquakes and what subterranean mechanisms are at play to cause the magma accumulation which leads to volcanic eruptions. America, in particular, needs these developments to happen pretty soon, because with both the Yellowstone Caldera and the San Andreas fault line seemingly overdue for some activity, it's only a matter of time before something of note happens there. And all the Morgan Freemans in the world won't save us then. 
At three, who picked the name? It's a good job classy civilizations from antiquity were the ones who named our solar system's planets. Mars was the Roman god of war, Jupiter the Roman god of sky, and Uranus the Greek god of heavens. But if they were all named today, we'd call them Planet McPlanety Face, Ringy Ringerson, and we'd probably keep Uranus because it's funny. But what about Earth? Who chose that name? Well, we can trace the word Earth back to an old English noun, Eartha. There is no known origin for the application of this term in reference to the entire world. Although it is generally accepted that Earth started to move from a description of dirt to a formal title around the formation of early modern English in the late 15th century. At 2. Where's our Ice Age at? If any 20th century Fox producers are watching this, we're not referring to those Ray Romano movies you keep making. You've done five already, guys. That's enough. It's time for the Ice Age to end. Sid and Manny to go extinct and their corpses to start rotting into mush. No, we are, of course, talking about the periods of extremely cold climate which can last for millions of years, plunging Earth into a perpetual winter. There have been five major ice ages in Earth's history and within the present one, the Pliocene Quaternary Glaciation. Cycles of ice sheets have been advancing and retreating for between 40,000 and 100,000 years at a time in what's called a glacial period. These temperature drops are caused by fluctuations in Earth's orbit called Milankovitch cycles. And guess what? Our next glacial period is way overdue. Oh no, I hope we're not snowman pregnant. We currently reside in an interglacial period of 11,000 years, and typically these last for about 10,000 to 12,000 years. So at most, we should have about a thousand years left before the world gets cooler. And what's cooler than being cool? Ice cold, of course. As Andre 3000 famously posited in his 2003 thesis, hey ya! But shockingly, just last year, NASA published a study showing Antarctica was gaining more ice than it was losing. And with global warming on the rise, nobody knows why this might be. Mathematics professor Valentina Zarkova believes it is related to solar cycles, and using a model based on solar observations from the Royal Astronomical Society, which she claims is 97% accurate, she predicts we're heading for a mini ice age in as little as 15 years. And at number one, how hot will it get? Far likelier than a sudden ice age is an extreme global heat crisis. Because today, around 97% of climate scientists agree climate change is occurring, and 82% believe it is likely caused by the activities of man. But if you disagree with them, that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. However, you will be forced to go sit in the special corner with Bobby Ray Simmons to discuss flat earth theories and how the moon is made of cheese. Climate change denial occurs because many efforts to counteract it aren't beneficial to big business and data is often twisted to fit the agendas of major corporations. Remember the NASA report on Antarctica gaining sea ice? That's true, but it's actually losing land ice because of global warming, which many climate change deniers conveniently ignore. We know that industrial ranching, deforestation, and fossil fuel use are three of the main causes of our atmosphere trapping heat, but exactly how hotter it will get in the future is something we cannot predict. Various modeling studies suggest an increase between 2.7 and 19.8 degrees Fahrenheit over the next century. But with Arctic sea ice shrinking, sea levels rising, and the Earth breaking temperatures every year, the effects of climate change are obvious, even if the exact gauge on the thermometer is not. So that's our list of things we don't know about Earth. Are you hankering for a few more delicious unanswered questions? Then watch our recent video on 7 unexplained human conditions, which with hindsight should have included how people can be stupid enough to believe in flat earth theories.